So we heard about it for years, but we never actually went to MAGFest. Well, it's because they were stupid. They had it on New Year's Eve. It's like, who the hell is going to give up their New Year's Eve to go to almost any convention? What what convention could possibly be on New Year's Eve that you would still go? I would go to PAX. I don't think I would go to New Year's Eve I would go to one New Year's PAX. It depends on where the PAX was. Seattle? I don't know if I would go to Seattle. You wouldn't go to Seattle for PAX on New Year's Eve? Imagine the craziness. No, I don't know. It would be a close call. Uh, so MAGFest we ignored every year just because, well, before I didn't even know it existed. Like, I vaguely heard, oh, there's something called MAGFest. I knew Magfest. there was a convention called MAGFest. I knew it had, mo- uh, you know, it was a gaming con. It was mostly video game uh, oriented and that it also had the video game music. But I didn't, you know, it wasn't large in my brain. It was just a convention I knew existed. Sort of like, you know, there's like 100 conventions. I know they exist. Yeah, I think when it really came to light was the whole, they did the, they had John St. John in their ad. Well, that was, that was one or two years ago, right? They had John St. John in the ad. They made that awesome YouTube video to promote it and, and I was, was like, like oh fast well and what it was is that it wasn't that the uh that you know so I thought the convention was somehow better it's that it, that ad let me know that the people at that convention running it were very culturally similar to us they were our people what really got me, though, was when it was explained to me that there is an official yell of MAGFest, the Colossus. Well, that was only really... apparently invented what? last year. That was only invented last year. Yeah, I but when we heard about it last year, and suddenly it was like that seemed like the kind of thing that we would dig, yeah. and that was correct. It definitely, you know, it became very apparent in the past year or two that MAGFest was our style. So this year, they actually came to us and said, hey, you guys want to come to MAGFest, be guests, do a panel, do your usual thing, the stuff you do at all the other cons? And we said yes, because it wasn't Because it New wasn't Year's. on New Year's, yeah. I mean, if it was on New Year's again, I would have said no, but we said yes. Now, many of you might be new listeners. You're trying to check out, like, all right, we're doing this review of MAGFest. I was at MAGFest. I want to see what you have to say. We're very harsh on conventions. We often complain about all the things that go wrong with them, because a lot of conventions do things that's very the only badly. interesting thing to talk about a lot of the time is what went wrong. Now, you know, if you talk about what went right, it's like, well, this was fun. And this is fun. Of course, and this is it's fun. a new con. I mean, how many Oticons did we cover? How many times can you say the artist alley is this big and is this many people in it? <laughs> so what we're going to do is start with all the bad parts of MAGFest, get Ooh. all the complaining out of the way so we can talk about the good stuff because there was some bad. There was a quite a in bit fact, of there bad. In fact, there was a portent. There was, it was indeed a quite smelly <laughs> so portent. we're excited. We don't know about the culture of this con. We're ready to go. We get on the Bolt bus from I had, Manhattan. I had good ex- high expectations for MAGFest. Way high. Way higher knew, than like, Zenkai Con the first time we went. I knew it, I knew it was we small. Went. I knew it relatively. It was only a few thousand people, which it was. I knew it was four days, and we were going, you know, in the afternoon on the first, the Thursday. So yeah. I, we we're going to get a lot out of it. And I knew that it was culturally similar to us. So I was like, all right, this is going to be, this is going to be good. Also, a hotel con. Very rarely. 24-7. You know, back before we did Geek Nights or anything, we would go to a lot of hotel cons. where 24-7 gaming, you know, they're kind of small, everything's crazy. And now we only go to, like, Paxes and Oticons, all the really big ones. So it, would be, it was interesting to go back to a hotel-style con being this much older and weirder and, you know, doing panels and everything. Yep. So we get on the Volt bus, and there is immediately BO. Yep. There like, was... wicked gamer BO. Now, there was no way to 100% know who had this BO. It was probably that guy sitting right it behind us. It was probably us. that guy sitting right behind us, and I think it was a, it was a case of no hair washing. That is what it seemed like. He to was me. wearing the kind of brown, like gamer shirt with a gamer thing he on it. He was definitely going to Magfest because he probably been worn a couple of times. Because he asked us at the end of the bus ride, "Hey, you guys going to Magfest? You want to, you know, ride over there together or whatever?" Because he was taking the metro, I think, together. The over bus there. was like half Magfest people. We took an expensive, uh, not yellow cab. To yeah, get over basically there. the guy. If the guy, you out there, if you're watching this, you probably know who you are. We're sorry, but you had some mad bo. So when you said, "Hey, you want to share a cab?" I said, "Yeah, we'll see." We booked out of that. We terminal. didn't know that that we didn't know for sure that, that was the bo guy, but I was pretty sure that for, was my. If I had to, if I had to bet on which guy on the bus had the bo, that's the guy I would have bet all my money on. So Magfest number had a, two was the old lady who was sitting in front of me who didn't yeah, move. Yeah, she could have had a bo. She could have been dead. Who, no, she wasn't dead. Though Magfest overall had a bo problem. Mm. We cannot pretend that that was not ring, there. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> Yeah, hey, B.O. problem? Do I have a B.O. problem? I mean, we got back to Manhattan. I remember stepping off the bus, and it was a breath of fresh air. Jesus, MAGFest. Take a goddamn shower. Yeah, and it wasn't... I even saw some MAGFest staff who would wear the same shirt on one day, and then I saw them the next day, and they had the same shirt. Yeah, Not you... setting a good example. Now, if you wear the same shirt more than two days in a row, that's hobo territory. That is indeed hobo territory. Now, I understand cons. Like, a lot of con staff only have one staff shirt. You got to fix that. This was not... I saw... Staff wearing non-staff shirts multiple days. I did in a wear row. my kilt three days, but you can go a That's long a time with pants. That's different. And non-bifurcated male garments. Yes. Can't do that so much with a t-shirt. No, not at all. 
I, I don't know what to do about the VO problem. I think it's because it was 24-7 con and because the hotel sold out. There were like seven or eight people in every room. Yeah. And I don't think people were taking showers. No, I think that also the elevator problem. This, is a, this wasn't a problem for us or for... See, we were in a hotel that was across... It was just like one street away from the actual hotel. The Too far to walk in the cold. But. It was the official overflow hotel, but they had a shuttle bus, which is basically a big van, take us over there every half hour back and forth. And it actually, I was expecting to lose a lot of time with that shuttle bus. Yeah, we, we really, like, that, going into this, we're like, that's probably going to ruin our con. And we have nothing but to no, complain about the with shuttle that. bus totally worked. What uh, was not good is that the main hotel was actually two hotels. It was a big, tall tower style, and it was also uh, a separate retreat style. So there were two hotels in the main hotel that were connected physically to MAGFest. The big, you know, the wide-out uh, retreat one was totally cool. That's where our friends were staying. And they could just go to their room anytime. And if I had to go back and it was in the same location, I would want to be in that retreat hotel. Yep, definitely. But it, to avoid the shuttle bus. But the tower hotel was an incredibly tall tower with not so many rooms on each floor, with a lot of floors and poorly programmed elevators. Yep. And even if those elevators were well-programmed... There was no way to deal not, with that load. There, there were not enough of them. They were not designed to handle that much traffic going up and down constantly. But... A saving grace for us, the few times I tried to go up there, and I failed many times, Cold Guy had an awesome party on the eighth floor that I tried to go to like four times, yeah. and I just couldn't make it. No one there knew about the go down to go up or go up to go down trick. Oh. Like, no one was doing that. Our bag of tricks, and this has got a running theme with us Tragedy at the Commons. Our bag of tricks was brand new here. Like, Oticon, all those big cons, everyone's figured that stuff out by now. Magfest. No one there really goes to other cons. Most of the people we talked to were like, this is not this is not like this is my first MAGFest. They were like, this is the first convention I have ever been to. I'd like someday to go to PAX. Yeah, I, haven't, I didn't do a survey, obviously, but of the people I talked to, right, the vast majority of the people either had never been to another convention or had never been to a convention before ever. And there were a few people, obviously, who were big convention goers like us, but most of the people I talked to were not convention-type people. You know, I think there was maybe, there was that one girl who knew Tex. Yep. And there was a girl with like a Pax East scarf. That was weird. Small circles running into people who helped staff conventions we used to staff through a third person randomly in Virginia. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> but the back to the BO, like the elevator thing, I think as a result, people just weren't taking showers because, you know, eight people in a room, they want to go play some games. They take the elevator down, figure I'll shower later when everyone's done. Can't go back up. There's no way to get back up to There's your room. There's a line at the elevator at all times. No matter when you pass by those elevators, there were always people there waiting to get it on and off. And also on YouTube, I didn't see this during the convention because, you know, there was like a whole areas of this convention that I missed out on because I just didn't get over there. Right? Yep. Even though it was a small con, there were just areas I didn't go to. And, mo you know, part of that experience I saw on YouTube was the elevator party, elevator, right? <laughs> Apparently, if you go on YouTube and you search for MAGFest elevator party, there were people who got a boombox, got in those elevators, and were just like, elevate, and you could hear the elevator party coming up in the elevator, <laughs> right? <laughs> the trouble with that, though, that's not helping, guys. No, but it was a, you know, it was a cultural thing at the con that we missed out well, on. Well, remember back at uh, RIT, the elevator party when I was a freshman? Just that one day, randomly, all the elevators had a party in them. Yeah, that was good. We missed stuff like that. I like that. But uh, I, we got to do something about the B.O. Because it's not like PAX. Like, every con, there's that one guy with B.O. Like, you, he walks through the room, and everyone's like, oh, my God, that guy. Or, you know, small gaming cons, there's, like, the cluster of the fat Warhammer guys with their B.O. And this when, that was... ha when that happens, right, if there's a Warhammer room with B.O. or if there's a DDR machine with B.O., just don't go near it. Yeah, wait. or go over there once, you'll be like, that's my DDR, and no, then you, you get you away. Wait, you just keep your eye on it, wait for it to clear out at a quiet moment. Because a 24-hour con, it's going to be cleared out at some point. Go over there and do it while it's cleared out and get out. And a lot of cons, like on Sunday, I'll have the BO because people just don't shower. They just want to travel. And you, you expect that. It, but this was like constant and everywhere, like low level, no matter where you went. No matter where you went, there was a tiny bit of BO everywhere, except in a few places like the hotel restaurant. And, uh, or outside, yeah. right, where there was smoking by the entrance. The first time I walked outside, it was like, whoa, whoa. Like, yeah. suddenly I realized that I had become accustomed to BO. Of course. And then there were obviously, you know, every few minutes or so, if you were walking around or, you know, there would be a person with really bad There'd BO. There'd be a peak. Like, yep. there was a constant low level and peak, so the average was pretty high. So I, it's sort of like a bad guy in a video game who leaves, like, smoke behind him, and there were a few of them, and they were traveling around, and eventually there was smoke everywhere, and since it's four days, forget it. And you might think we're being harsh complaining about BO at a con. No, you have no, you don't understand. This was bad. All right, so... I had to wash everything. So we talked a lot about BO. I spent a lot of time on so, it. So there's only one other thing that went wrong with MAGFest. Big, oh, big thing that went wrong. Yeah. MAGFest 9 had the worst 
registration I have ever seen in a decade of going to conventions. I know, we we have ripped other conventions for their bad reg lines. Oh my god, we ripped I, Anime Boston. I had to wait in line for two hours. We How ripped, bad was that? We ripped Otakon for not mailing the badges. Otakon and, still and doesn't those, mail the badges. Those rippings were deserved rippings. However, those rippings pale in comparison to the ripping that MAGFest needs. You might think, like, Anime Boston, the year before we went, was like famous for its bad reg line. Like, it was just a disaster. Right? Even Kats there was a Katsukon that we did not attend that apparently the badges did not show up until like Friday night yep. or Saturday. Or even... Uh, not as bad. Penguicon back in the day, the badges didn't show up until late Friday night. Penguicon wasn't a bad reg. Well, there you, were, you walked I'm, up to the coat check and it took a minute and you got a badge. Once they had the badges to sell. Yeah. Thing is, they didn't check the badges until they could sell them, so they, they fixed it. Yeah. MAGFest had not only a badge disaster, absolute disaster, no staff did anything about it yeah, at all. Yeah, they didn't even try to fix this problem whatsoever, right? Basically, what they had is they had a little booth that was the same booth they were selling the merch at, and it had maybe three or four laptops at it to which they were... What they would do is you would go up, they would look for you in the database because it was sold out. It was all pre-reg. Then they would find your badge with your number on like it. Like 4197. Here you are. Here is your number, 4197. And they'd make you sign this also, I can, waiver. Also, I, I was watching their computers, and the computers are very slow. Very shitty software, whatever they were using. They were also checking every single convention attendee's ID to see how old they were and giving wristbands depending on your age. Yeah. All these factors meant about five minutes per person. Minimum. Mm -hmm. Five minutes per and person. And then they had a huge pile of, like, uh, lanyards and stuff. You had to rip one out of there. And... So five minutes per person times 4,000 people is... Even with only a few thousand people, right? They only had, like, two or three laptops there, and one of them was just for staff and guests, guests and those sorts of people. And, and vendors. vendors. Right? So we waited in a very short staff vendor guest line. There were maybe 10 people in front of us in line. It took us like over an hour and a half to get through that it line. It was about an hour and 45 minutes. But meanwhile, the normal registrant line was gigantic, right? And not we, moving we, much faster. It wrapped around the hotel and it took like two hours to move like 100 feet in that line. It was apparently there was the line was stacked up from when the convention opened on Thursday to when it closed on Thursday, and I didn't really see that line being non-disastrous until Friday, at some point. Friday, when there was a huge line in the morning, kind of slowly petered out. But it's like they didn't try to add more stations, grab more laptops. They, there was they no sense try. of urgency at Oticon when they had a problem. I mean, while I don't like the way Oticon does their badges, when there was a reg problem, there were like ten staffers. Like, all right, how do we fix this? What do we do? Let's open up more reg over there. Let's do something. They, yeah, guess, even if the nothing. something that you try doesn't work and you fail at least you tried magfest didn't even seem like it was a problem they were just like yeah regin we're regin we got three reg things we're going yeah it was like they didn't even think there was something wrong with that hello that was disastrous if i had to wait in that line i might have just left and not if i showed up on thursday i would have charged back my credit card i would have charged back my credit card just left I wouldn't have left. I would have because they didn't check badges anywhere except the video game room and the concerts. That's true. I would have gone to Magfest anyway. And there were some people who were at Magfest, quite a few of them, without badges, and because they didn't go to concerts or they didn't go to the main uh, video game console room, they didn't have a problem. They just went without a badge. I mean, I would not have. I really, it's. I would not have dealt with it had I been an attendee. But even as a guest, I had to wait an hour and 40 minutes to get 10 spaces through a and line. And then they didn't even have us in their, uh, yeah. in their computer. So we do a lot of conventions. And cons often screw stuff up. Like, we'll get to, like... I saw, the... I saw it coming a mile away. Though. Yeah, but, like, one Kineticon we went to way back, like, they didn't have our schedule for us or tell us what panels we were doing. So we literally, like, get there, get our badges, get a con book, open it up, find names of panels that we're pretty sure we submitted, mm -hmm. and then we just showed up to them expecting to have to do them. And we were right. That was the worst I'd ever dealt with until MAGFest, where they just, we weren't on the list. Yeah. And the staff didn't We have... had to get the panels guy to come up and say, yes, these guys are real. But even then, the panels guy's like, these guys are for real. And then he left, and then they still didn't know what to do. And in the end, they never even gave us our guest badges. They gave us normal badges. Yeah, they just picked up normal badges. Now, here's how they could fix this, right? Number one, you need more reg stations. Yep. A lot more. No, oh, wait, 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 wait. Mail wait. the badges, and it won't matter. Wait, now, what bothers me is that last year, apparently, there's this huge open area right next to the reg area. They could have had, like... 30 people doing reg. That area was empty, and the area they had for reg was smaller than the room we're recording the show in. Yeah, apparently they had it right last year, and they got it wrong this year, but anyway. Well, mail there, the badges. There was, I heard of internal drama among the staff, but that's no excuse. Whatever. Mail the badges. If you, Even if you don't mail them, or even if you do mail them, there are still some people who got to pick them up at the con, yep. right? 